What could you do if you had all the skills, took the classes, read the books, and burned them in night oil? What could you do? What true value could you develop? This is one of the better exercises. What could I become? What could I really do in the marketplace, in enterprise, home, family, experience, friendship, marriage? How valuable could I become? The means of you, valuable enough to work on what's not working so I can reach my full capacity. If I'm operating at 20, what could I possibly do with the other? Once you start understanding how valuable you are, it's a whole new experience. Understanding self-worth plays a major role in our ability to be self-enterprising. Our self-worth makes the difference between being lazy and being active, being self-enterprising. If we don't feel good about ourselves, we won't feel good about our lives. And if we don't feel good about our lives, we won't be very interested in looking for opportunities. Enterprise is always better than ease. Every time we choose to do less than we possibly can, it affects our self-confidence, our self-worth. If we keep doing a little less every day, a little less, a little less, every day that we keep doing a little less, we are also being a little less. Can you imagine what you'd end up being after 10 years of doing a little less every day? It's devastating. Think about it. Doing less could ruin your life. Now, you can reverse the process of doing a little less. You can reverse this process by using self-direction, self-reliance, self-discipline. You alter the course by doing a little more each day, a little more, a little more, a little more. And pretty soon, you'll develop a new habit of doing rather than neglecting. In days and weeks and months of doing a little more will ultimately increase your confidence, your courage, your creativity, and your self-worth. In the end, it's how we feel about ourselves that provides the greatest reward from activity and enterprise. It's not what we get or what we accumulate that makes us valuable. It's what we become that makes us valuable. Success isn't in the having. Success is in the doing. It's the process of doing that brings value. It's the activity that transforms our dreams into reality, that converts ideas into actuality. Let me tell you what I think most messes with the mind. I think that simply doing less than you can messes with the mind. It causes all kinds of psychic damage. I think being less than you can be, trying less than you could try, doing it with less enthusiasm than you can do it messes with the mind. It somehow damages the mind, damages our self-image. Because here's what I've discovered happens. The minute you turn this around and start extending yourself, you'll see immediate rewards. Maybe not monetary ones yet, but it's how you feel about yourself that's the greatest value. You see, it's not what we get that makes us valuable. It's what we become. Discover all you can do. See how much you can earn, how much you can share, how much you can start, how much you can finish, how much you can reach, how far you can extend your influence. Some people out there would have us believe that positive affirmation is more important than activity. Instead of doing something constructive to change our lives, they would have us repeating slogans and canned affirmations like, every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better. Well, getting better and better doesn't just happen from wishful thinking. Getting better and better only happens with the discipline of doing better and better. Discipline is a requirement for progress, and affirmations without discipline are, in reality, delusions. Don't get me wrong here. There's nothing wrong with affirming the good life, as long as we are disciplined enough to take action. Affirmations can be effective as long as we remember two very important rules. Number one, we should never allow affirmation to replace action. Feeling better is no substitute for doing better. And two, whatever we choose to affirm must be the truth. If the truth happens to be that we're broke, the best affirmation would be to simply say, I'm broke. Face it, accept it, be responsible for it, and change it. By admitting that you're broke, by saying it out loud, you'll probably be disgusted enough to start the thinking process on how to change it. Anyone saying, I'm broke, with conviction will most likely be driven from ease to action. Confronting harsh realities has an incredible effect. Confronting the truth and then applying the discipline to express the truth instead of disguising it inevitably leads to positive change. And reality is always the best beginning. You see, within reality lies the possibility to create our own personal miracle. And the power of faith starts with reality. And if we can bring ourselves to state the truth about a situation, then, as the saying goes, the truth will set us free.
Here's another old saying, faith isn't faith unless it's all you're holding on to. If your life and circumstances have resulted in a situation that is ugly, call it ugly. If you've lost it all, admit that you've lost it all, be responsible for it. And if faith is all you've got left, use it. Create your own personal miracle. Once we understand and accept the truth, the promise of the future is freed from the shackles of deception. Once we accept the truth, the promise of the future will pull us. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to disciplines. The least lack of discipline starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the psyche. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough, you say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No, it's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've got the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least neglect. Neglect starts as an infection, and if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And one neglect leads to another. And the worst of all, when neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy, like I should and I could and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenarios six years from now, giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the get to discipline. Okay, let's get kids involved in the least of disciplines. One more, and then one more, and then another one, and then another one, and then some more. And the first thing you know, you're weaving the tapestry of a disciplined life into which you can pour more wisdom, more attitude, more strong feeling, more faith, more courage. Now you've got something, a vessel in which to put it. And now the equity starts to flow, and the early return. I'm telling you, if you start this process, your return will have you so excited you'll commit yourself to this strategy for the rest of your life. You'll never go back to the old ways. Join a new crowd, join a new group, the disciplines to do it. Take action. Your self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself, how much you respect yourself, how much you value yourself, and your interactions with other people. And the more you like yourself and value yourself, the more you like and value other people. And the more you like and value other people, the more they value right back. We also found out that self-esteem is like physical fitness. You can actually build your self-esteem consistently over time by doing and saying certain things. So, the starting point of building your self-esteem is for you to have a clear sense of who you are and what you want. Let's say, what are your very best qualities? What are your very best skills and abilities? What are the things that you do or have done in the past that account for most of your success? When you think back on the things that you're good at, the things that you enjoy, the things that make you happy, you'll find that you like yourself and respect yourself even more. A second way to build your self-esteem is to set goals. It's to say, if I could achieve anything at all in life, what would I like to achieve in the weeks and months and years ahead? And write it down, write it down, write it down. Here's what psychologists have discovered. Setting big goals for yourself improves your self-image and raises your self-esteem. You actually like yourself and respect yourself more when you have big goals for your life. You have more self-confidence and you're happier about yourself. A third way to build your self-esteem is through self-discipline. We say that self-esteem leads to self-discipline, and self-discipline increases your self-esteem. Does that mean setting priorities on your work? Saying to yourself, what is the most important thing I could do right now? And then disciplining yourself to do that. Now, here's the key, and it's the great key to success. It's called task completion. Whenever you start and complete a task, your self-esteem goes up. You like and respect yourself more. You feel like a winner because completing a task is like crossing a finish line. It gives you a feeling of winning. So if you start and complete any task yourself, your self-esteem goes up. If you start and complete your most important task, your self-esteem goes up very high. And you feel sometimes exhilarated. Your brain releases endorphins which are called nature's happy drug.
They make you happy. And not only that, they motivate you to want to do more things and to do them better and to do them sooner as well. So those are some of the ways to raise your self-esteem. And especially underlying everything that you do by repeating the magic words, I like myself, I like myself, I like myself. Know who you are, set clear goals, work on the most important things that you can do, achieve those goals, and discipline yourself to complete your tasks. And your self-esteem will go up and up and up. Ladies and gentlemen, today we embark on a journey into the depths of the human psyche, into the realms of abundance, health, and happiness. For it is in understanding the psychology of money, health, and happiness that we unlock the doors to our true potential. That we unleash the forces within us to create the lives we desire. Let me begin by speaking of money. Ah, oh, money, the great enabler, the tool of trade, the currency of dreams. Many have pondered its nature, its power, its allure. But let me tell you, my friends, money is but a reflection of our inner world. It is not the end goal, but rather the means to achieve our dreams, our aspirations, our highest visions. Money is energy, and like all forms of energy, it flows where it is welcomed, where it is nurtured, where it is respected. But how do we welcome this energy into our lives? How do we attract abundance like a magnet attracts iron? It begins with our mindset, with our beliefs about money. You see, wealth is not just about external circumstances, it is primarily about internal disposition. It is about cultivating a mindset of abundance, of prosperity, of possibility. Income seldom exceeds personal development. To increase our wealth, we must first increase our value to the world. We must invest in ourselves, in our skills, in our knowledge, in our character. For it is through personal development that we become the kind of people who attract wealth effortlessly, who create opportunities where others see obstacles, who turn dreams into reality. But let us not forget the twin pillars of health and happiness. For what good is wealth without health? And what good is health without happiness? Health is the foundation upon which we build our lives, the cornerstone of vitality, of energy, of well-being. And yet, in our pursuit of success, we often neglect this most precious gift. We sacrifice sleep for productivity, nutrition for convenience, exercise for work. But let me tell you, my friends, there is no success without health. True wealth is not just about the size of our bank accounts. It is about the quality of our lives, about the vitality with which we live each day. And so, we must prioritize our health. We must nurture our bodies, our minds, our spirits. We must eat well, exercise regularly, rest deeply. We must cultivate habits of self-care, of self-love, of self-respect. For it is through taking care of ourselves that we are able to show up in the world, to give our best to our work, to our families, to our communities. But health alone is not enough. We must also cultivate happiness. For what good is a healthy body without a happy heart? Happiness is not some distant destination. It is a way of being, a state of mind, a choice we make each and every day. And yet, in our pursuit of success, we often chase happiness like a dog chasing its own tail. We think that if only we achieve this goal or acquire that possession or reach a certain milestone, then we will be happy. But the truth is, Happiness is not something to be pursued, it is something to be cultivated from within. It is about finding joy in the little things, in the beauty of nature, in the laughter of loved ones, in the simple pleasures of life. It is about practicing gratitude, about savoring the present moment, about living with intention and purpose. For happiness is not a destination, it is a journey, a journey that begins and ends with the choices we make each day with the attitudes we bring to our lives, with the love we share with others. As we delve into the topic of personal development, let us remember that true success is not measured by the size of our bank accounts or the number on the scale or the fleeting pleasures of the moment. It is measured by the richness of our relationships, by the depth of our fulfillment, by the legacy we leave behind. It is about living with passion and purpose, with integrity and authenticity, with grace and gratitude. Let's finish up with why personal development is the secret to your future. You see, in the game of life, there are no shortcuts to success, no magic pills, no overnight sensations. The road to greatness is paved with dedication, discipline, and a burning desire to grow. And at the heart of this journey lies the principle of personal development. 
Why must you always work on your personal development, you ask? Because it's the key that unlocks the door to your full potential. It's the bridge that connects your dreams to reality. It's the compass that guides you through the turbulent waters of life. Let me tell you a story. A story of a young man who grew up in the heartland of America with nothing but a pocket full of dreams and a relentless hunger for success. That young man was me, Jim Ron, and I stand before you today as living proof of the power of personal development. You see, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I didn't have wealthy parents or influential connections. But what I did have was a burning desire to succeed, a hunger to learn, and an unwavering commitment to personal growth. I devoured books like a starving man at a feast. I attended seminars. I sought out mentors. And I relentlessly pursued every opportunity to expand my knowledge and improve myself. And you know what? It paid off in ways I couldn't even imagine. Because here's the truth. My friends, your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. If you want to achieve greatness, if you want to live a life of abundance and fulfillment, then you must commit yourself to the ongoing journey of self-improvement. But what does personal development entail, you may wonder. It's not just about acquiring new skills or accumulating knowledge, though those are certainly important aspects. Personal development is about holistic growth, mind, body, and soul. It's about cultivating a positive mindset that sees opportunities where others see obstacles. It's about honing your communication skills so you can inspire and influence others. It's about taking care of your physical health so you have the energy and vitality to pursue your goals. And it's about nurturing your spirit, feeding your soul with wisdom and inspiration that sustains you through life's trials and tribulations. Now, I won't pretend that the journey of personal development is easy. It requires sacrifice, it demands discipline, and it often means stepping out of your comfort zone. But let me ask you this, is the easy road really worth traveling? Is a life of mediocrity and regret truly satisfying? I believe, deep in my heart, that each and every one of you is destined for greatness. But destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. It's the choices you make each and every day to invest in yourself, to push yourself, to never settle for anything less than your best, that will ultimately determine your destiny. So, my friends, I urge you, Commit yourself to the journey of personal development. Set audacious goals and then commit yourself wholeheartedly to achieving them. Surround yourself with people who inspire you and support your growth. And never, ever stop learning, growing, and evolving into the magnificent person you were meant to be. In the words of my dear friend and mentor, the late great Earl Shove, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge, wish for more wisdom. So go forth, my friends, and embark on the greatest adventure of all. The adventure of becoming the best version of yourself. The world is waiting for you to unleash your greatness. And remember, as you journey down this path of personal development, I'll be cheering you on every step of the way. Thank you, and God bless. My friend, it's a pleasure to talk to you about the extraordinary journey that lies ahead as we embrace the new year. Welcome to a time where we're given the opportunity to not just dream of a better life, but to actively craft it one day at a time. I call it the New Year Revolution because it's a chance for each one of us to revolt against mediocrity, complacency, and settle for anything less than the exceptional life we desire and deserve. Imagine your life as a canvas, a masterpiece waiting to be painted stroke by stroke. The New Year presents us with a fresh canvas, blank and full of potential. It's up to us how we wield the brush, which colors we choose, and the story we wish to create. Now, my friend, let's embark on this journey together, where transformation isn't merely a possibility but an absolute certainty. Every single day holds the power to shape the course of our lives. It's the small, consistent actions compounded over time that create profound and lasting change. Let me share with you a principle that has stood the test of time. The principle of continuous improvement. It's not about making grandiose resolutions that fade away by February. No, it's about committing to becoming even just 1% better each day. Think about it. What if you committed to learning something new each day? What if you dedicated a portion of your time daily to exercise your body, to expand your mind, and to nurture your spirit? 
It might seem small in the moment, inconsequential even, but oh, the monumental impact it has over weeks, months, and years. See, it's not about the massive leaps, but the consistent steps forward. It's about saying yes to growth, discipline, and resilience. Remember, the same wind blows on us all. It's not the blowing of the wind that determines your destination, but the set of your sail. The New Year revolution isn't just about setting goals. It's about creating systems that ensure your success. It's about developing habits that align with the vision you have for your life. If you desire health, commit to daily habits of nourishing food and physical exercise. If you aim for success in your career, instill habits of continuous learning, networking, and relentless effort. Moreover, my friend, let's talk about the power of mindset. Your thoughts shape your reality, the way you perceive the world around you, the beliefs you hold about yourself and your capabilities. They're the architects of your destiny. So, in this New Year revolution, let's declare a revolution of our minds. Banish self-doubt. Embrace a mindset of abundance and possibility. Replace fear with faith, hesitation with boldness, and excuses with action. Remember, the greatest revolution begins within. It's about rewiring your thinking, challenging limiting beliefs, and daring to dream audaciously. In the quest for personal revolution, let's also remember the power of association. Surround yourself with individuals who uplift, inspire, and challenge you to be your best self. As the saying goes, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose wisely. Now, my friend, as we embark on this New Year revolution, let's also touch upon the significance of gratitude. Gratitude is the key that unlocks the abundance of life. In the pursuit of progress, let's not forget to be grateful for where we are, for the lessons learned, and for the opportunities that await. Every day, take a moment to acknowledge the blessings in your life. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude, and you'll attract more things to be grateful for. Gratitude fuels joy, contentment, and an unwavering belief in the beauty of life. As we conclude this conversation on the cusp of the new year, remember this. The power to transform your life lies within you. You are the sculptor of your destiny, the author of your story. The canvas is yours, painted with purpose, passion, and persistence. The New Year revolution isn't a one-time event, it's a daily commitment to excellence. It's about choosing growth over comfort, action over inertia, and resilience over surrender. Let's step into the New Year with unwavering determination, unshakable belief, and an unquenchable thirst for greatness. Embrace the journey, celebrate the small victories, and never lose sight of the incredible potential that resides within you. Now, to my last point. As we stand on the precipice of this new year, let's embrace the idea that our financial destinies are not predetermined. They are crafted through conscious choices, habits, and an unwavering commitment to progress. Now, let's talk about the cornerstone of financial independence, personal development. You see, the most valuable asset you possess is not your bank account or possessions, it's your mind. Invest in yourself. Commit to daily growth and improvement. Read books, attend seminars, and surround yourself with mentors who have walked the path you aspire to tread. Remember, the key to financial success isn't solely about amassing wealth. It's about developing the skills, mindset, and habits that attract abundance. Set clear, compelling financial goals. Define your vision for wealth, and then break it down into actionable steps that you can take every single day. But let's be clear. Financial independence isn't just about making money. That's about mastering money. Learn the principles of wealth creation and financial management. Understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Invest in assets that generate income and appreciate over time rather than liabilities that drain your resources. One of the most crucial habits on the road to financial freedom is the habit of saving. Pay yourself first. Allocate a portion of your income to savings and investments before anything else. Make it a non-negotiable priority. You work hard for your money. Let your money work hard for you in return. Furthermore, let's discuss the power of budgeting and living below your means. Create a budget that aligns with your financial goals and stick to it. Live modestly. Resist the temptation of instant gratification and prioritize long-term financial stability over short-term pleasures. 
Now, onto a topic that's often overlooked. The importance of multiple streams of income. Don't rely solely on one source of income. Explore opportunities for diversification. Whether it's starting a side business, investing in stocks, real estate, or other ventures, having multiple streams of income not only safeguards you against financial uncertainties but propels you closer to financial freedom. Moreover, let's talk about the significance of wise spending and avoiding debt traps. Live within your means and avoid unnecessary debt. Debt can be a burden that shackles your financial freedom. Be prudent in your financial decisions, and if you must use debt, do so wisely and strategically. Another crucial aspect of financial independence is the power of compounding. Albert Einstein referred to compound interest as the eighth wonder of the world. The earlier you start investing and allowing your investments to grow, the more significant the impact of compounding becomes. In this New Year revolution, let's also address the mindset shift required for financial abundance. Your beliefs about money shape your financial reality. Cultivate an abundance mindset. Believe that there's more than enough wealth in the world and that you deserve your share of it. Replace limiting beliefs about money with empowering ones. Surround yourself with individuals who have a healthy relationship with money. People who inspire, educate, and challenge you to elevate your financial game. Remember, your associations play a crucial role in shaping your financial future. Lastly, let's talk about the importance of giving back. True wealth isn't just about accumulating riches. It's about making a positive impact. As you strive for financial independence, remember to give generously. Whether it's through charitable contributions or sharing your knowledge and resources, the act of giving opens the door to even greater abundance. In conclusion, my friends, the New Year revolution isn't just about resolutions that fade away with time. It's about a relentless commitment to transforming your financial life one day at a time. Embrace the journey. Invest in yourself. Cultivate habits that lead to financial freedom. Remember, financial independence is not an event, it's a process. It's about making conscious choices, taking consistent action, and staying true to your vision. As you step into this New Year revolution, seize the opportunity to revolutionize your financial destiny. I believe in you. I believe in your potential to achieve financial independence and live a life of abundance. Commit to this journey. Transform your life one day at a time. Here's to your financial revolution and the remarkable journey ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this momentous occasion where we embark upon the journey toward a year of purposeful progress. I'm here to ignite within you the fire of transformation, guiding you along the path to personal growth and inspiring you to carve out a destiny filled with purpose and fulfillment. Let me ask you this. What does personal growth mean to you? It's not merely about ticking off achievements or reaching specific milestones. It's about embracing a mindset, a relentless commitment to becoming the best version of yourself. It's about the pursuit of excellence in every facet of your life. From your career to your relationships, from your health to your mindset. My friends, personal growth is not a destination. It's a journey, a continuous evolution towards becoming the person you are capable of being. It's about challenging your limits, expanding your horizons, and stretching beyond your comfort zone. Remember, the magic happens when you dare to step into the unfamiliar, when you push past your self-imposed boundaries and explore the vast landscape of your potential. Now, let's delve into the key principles that will guide us on this transformative expedition throughout the coming year. 1. Clarity of Purpose Asterisk The very foundation of personal growth rests upon a crystal clear understanding of your purpose. Ask yourself, what drives me? What ignites my passion? Identify your passions, your dreams, and your aspirations. Visualize the life you desire to create. When you have a clear purpose, every action becomes intentional, propelling you forward with unwavering determination. 2. Commitment to Continuous Learning Asterisk Growth flourishes in the soil of knowledge. Make a commitment to lifelong learning. Read voraciously, seek wisdom from mentors, attend seminars, and embrace new experiences. Remember, the more you learn, the more you earn not just in monetary terms, but in the wealth of wisdom and skills that elevate your life. 3. Embrace resilience and persistence asterisk. Challenges are an inevitable part of the journey. 
They are not roadblocks, but stepping stones toward greatness. Cultivate resilience in the face of adversity. Embrace setbacks as opportunities to learn and grow stronger. Remember, it's not about avoiding failure. It's about bouncing back stronger each time. Persistence is the key that unlocks the door to success. 4. Surround yourself with greatness asterisk. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose your circle wisely. Surround yourself with individuals who inspire, challenge, and support your growth. Engage with mentors, connect with like-minded individuals, and build a network that fosters growth and positivity. 5. Practice self-reflection and mindfulness asterisk. Amidst the chaos of everyday life, take time to pause, reflect, and introspect. Practice mindfulness. Be present in the moment. Understand your strengths, acknowledge your weaknesses, and work on improving yourself daily. Self-awareness is the compass that guides you on the path to personal evolution. My dear friends, the year ahead holds limitless possibilities for your growth and success. But remember, the journey of personal growth is not about overnight transformations. It's about consistent, purposeful progress. Take one step at a time, and as you look back at the end of this year, you'll marvel at the incredible distance you've covered. So, as you stand at the threshold of this new chapter, embrace it with passion, dedication, and a burning desire to evolve into the best version of yourself. Your destiny awaits. The path to personal growth lies before you. Seize it with courage, determination, and an unwavering commitment to your dreams. This year, let's embark on this journey together, and let's make it a year of purposeful progress. Thank you, and may this year be the beginning of your most extraordinary chapter yet.